On that CT side, James, we talked about how important that aggression is. They're starting off on the side, which allows you to be aggressive from the get-go, round after round. And Gambit are going to be on the receiving end of that. But here in the pistol, looks like Furia going to make a play in connector. Gambit are headed right for it. Starting off well, very important. Sometimes that's the pistol, sometimes it's the consecutive rounds. We can see that Yuri will uh, thin the numbers out somewhat, thin out the herd for Gambit, but there are still three players making their way to that A bomb site. Shiro with the off angle, not able to connect, and maybe he'll be a bit cold coming into this one. Oh, great shot there from Axile, and that's the bomb down as well. Furia able to recover some kills here as they move closer to that A site for the recovery, but there is a play in bathrooms from Axile that could dismantle everything. It's all about the timing. Inters has to keep the distraction alive here so that Axile has time to work this flank. He's going deep, he has to. Great shot, Axile's all on you, but it's dropped to take the frag and Furia to take the opening round. That is exactly what they needed. Win the CT pistol, start as you mean to go on. Now that is just the first part of this with a bomb plant. We'll see what Gambit choose to do in a second round. Slate, where on earth have you been, honestly? Gambit win the first map in overtime, as we can see there under the score. Very strong, well, stronger, I think it's fair to say, in normal time. Furious backs to the wall, brought it to overtime, started off well, ended terribly. And hey, sometimes it has to be done the hard way, just ask Cloud9. <laughs> Absolutely. There's a smoke to cut off vision from Fountain Yuri playing aggressive around party. And you can see Gambit actually looking to slowly gain space around the A side of the map in this version of their default. And Hobbit's absolutely, na absolutely nailed Yuri there. So, seen through that play. And that's a good start here for Gambit. It's Arate looking to collect the weapon if he can find it. Oh, it's outside of the smoke. So, he has to stay on the scout. And Gambit just holding to see if there's a counterplay. There is not just yet. And Vinny, he is stuck here in connector. Yeah, it's a nervous position. If you don't have info short B, it's hard to rotate out, especially as time creeps on. No one checking it yet. So we'll see if he has a part to play later. For now, Art's moving forward. Scope in tow with that org. But be careful behind that tree now. Potentially lining up a flashbang, not gonna happen. But he's activated in connector as well. And he doesn't know it, but he's just picked up the bomb art. He didn't see it. It was I think it was dropped before the peak came through, if I'm not mistaken. And yep. uh, maybe he heard it, maybe he didn't, but if he didn't, they don't know where the bomb is just yet. But with 30 seconds on the clock, I can't imagine that bomb makes it to a bomb site. Yeah, and this position from Vinny is fantastic as well. How likely is it that Hobbit clears this? Well they know he's somewhere because he got he got a kill earlier, so he has to be around here somewhere. There You're he absolutely is. right. And there's a chance, because as you say, they don't know where the bomb is, but it's just 10 seconds at this point. There is not time to get to a site with this bomb. And Furia, they're good here. Gambit will just be holding on to these weapons. And Furia, they're going to be surviving this one. And honestly, oh, that's a great kill to pick up right before the end of the round. Very well done by Axile. Yeah, he knows they want the rifles. I mean, he's never going to make it there, really. But I'd imagine that's partly why he's peaking. So squeezing some extra damage towards the end is promising for Furia. Sorry, for Gambit, excuse me. But Furia have got a clean sheet for now. Question is, how long can they keep it for as we can see some rifles coming out for Gambit? So once again, we should expect Furia to throw that forward. You tell us if we have the Molotov there, the incendiary for t ramp Slow things down, force out a smoke, but actually, they don't have to use a the smoke there. They are going slow anyway, so they are able to hold on to that single smoke that they have. It turns is holding on to it. He's going to toss all of his util. Of course, a limited round for Gambit. Going for the force buy. He's going to make Fury aware of that connector presence that they have. That will be heard by drop. And Gambit slowly walking up A-long here. This is not going to be spotted for some time for Furia. Will they get the information they need in time? One minute remains. Now, there are four, uh, four smoke grenades for Furia, one of which is deployed by Divider. Now, these will be very key in terms of map control, so look out for those. Drop on the B-bomb site's got one. 
Vinny's just deployed one. K Serato's just deployed his as well. So Gambit don't have all the position that they're looking for at present. With 40 seconds on the clock, it's going to be a tight one, but they've got their opening kill. And maybe that changes things. Furia, again, just not winning the jewels. They've given themselves advantages. They've got position. They've got time on their side, but they lose the jewels, and that changes everything. And taking the smoke as it drops, and Vinny had the first few shots there, but the scout Shiro finishes it off. This is so hard here for Drop. He can't do it, and my God, the round just disintegrated. For Furia, they, they looked like they were in every perfect position, but like you say, not winning some of those key battles. They're losing 1v1s all over the map. That's what it came down to. Many, like on Inferno as well, on their CT side, 1v1 situations, they just didn't come out on top. AWP, missing shots, losing position. Um, some early plays, which, you know, fair enough. But when it's just a straight up 1v1, they're going the way of Gambit. And that's with, I mean, Case Rats have got a 30 bomb on the previous map. But they had so many problems because the key jewels that are yeah, at a conceding shots. position are not going the way of Furia. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we'll see if Furia warm up into this overpass. They're actually having to go for force here. The Eagles out. A little bit of utility, of course, looking quite weak overall on the firepower. They're being active, looking to play into connector. Gambit, again. The way that they default here, they're so methodical. They are ready for anything. They're looking for Fury to make a play. They know that Fury, their best chance to win a round like this is to get an early engagement, to get that early Deagle headshot, something like that. It's, that's how Fury win a round like this. And Gambit are not giving that to them. They've got a nice position on Hobbit. That position that Hobbit has in sewers is fantastic because you get to hear CT rotations in and out of the B site. So a Lurk Smoke has been deployed at Monster, as we can see. So the T's could threaten to walk up in this and, and flash and so on. Down goes Yuri. A dry round for Furia. Not really much they could do. It's got to wait for Gambit to make a play. And again, they're not shy of a slow round. Death by paper cuts in round four. And this is so great from Gambit. They've created all this attention towards the B side of the map. Now they've crept into the A site, and unfortunately for Furia, K Serato is the only player with just a, just a USP. Everybody else had something a little bit better, but it's looking like Gambit have again, once more, they've read the round, they've got the information, they forced Furia to give them information, and then Gambit used that against them to win the battle positionally, and they've kept five players alive, which is a huge result in a round like this, and we could see that in the previous matchup on Inferno, that hurt Furia, because when they eventually were fighting for rounds against Gambit. Gambit has so much money because they're so efficient. Yeah, looking troublesome very early on for Furia. But there's plenty of CS to play. But what again, what's key is if they're not getting kills and Gambit are building their money, that just means you've got really big pressure to win multiple rounds. If, if you know, if you're trading, if like two players are surviving for Gambit, you win a round, maybe they've got some pistols, a Galil, you know, a Mac-10 or something, but that's not really happening. They've, they've got full buys now, Gambit, which means that you've got to really win the rounds strongly as well. Two to two in overpass. Again, Gambit 1-0 up in terms of maps. They took the pick of Furia, who looked to do the same, but the road will be a long one for Furia as they find themselves ill-equipped once again. Yeah, Fury had a great position to really get that momentum going on the CT side. On overpass, that's extremely dangerous, but they were shot, uh, stopped just short of getting that going. Just a Mac-10 here on Vinny, of course, and a couple of Deagles. Fast sewer state comes through from Hobbit. That forward, uh, that forward Molotov does prevent the CTs from really moving forward and contesting it, and it gets Hobbit into that position. We saw this last round. Such a great position. You're so deep, you get a lot of info, and we can see how Gambit uses the info to win position against Furia in that previous round. And they're looking to do exactly the same thing here again. Slow investigation towards the A side of the map as they try to avoid these pistols. And Furia, it would be great to see them going for like a pop flash play, taking the initiative here, but again, it's all on this. Oh, Yuri, oh, Hobbit just, he just knows. Great angle. Hobbit has been a big problem. One of the uh, worst defenders as far as Furia are concerned. And again, not gonna just not gonna race into any bomb sites after a kill. They are gonna limit their errors by taking their time, 
and you can feel the desperation of Furia in a round such as this. Adigal, a CZ, and so on. Exile will lead the way in. He will find out a climber on the site. See how many people are there. Case Rato now is in a one versus two as we've had many kills on this bomb site. I don't think he's close to a weapon, so this will have to be done the hard way. Nafni could get one tapped if he can find a way to get close enough to him. And there's time pressure for Gambit as well. Look how patient they are, though. It's, it's insane how ready they are to just take their time. But who plants the bomb? Nafni, does he go for the bomb plant? Inters may have to trade then. 15 oh. seconds and bell rung again. Now Nafni, oh man. Really down to the wire, but Gambit will survive with one. That's a good effort from Fury. They did as much as they possibly could. Four kills, like you say, that is a lot of damage. And Furia, we're going to see Caserato picking up the AWP as well as Art. They're going double up straight away. It's a Brazilian and special. It, it really is. And, and honestly, on a map like Overpass, there is so much play to be had on both sides of the map in connector with the AWP. So Gambit, again, they are really good at dodging this kind of stuff. So we'll see if somehow if you're able to make it work. And in fact, Gambit going very fast towards a ramp, going very fast towards the fountain. Case Rata is going to get some action, flashed off. Oh, he's caught, he's caught. He can't get out in time. Yuri tries to capitalize somehow, trying to trade the, the frag and he can only get one out of it. That's a huge problem. Still an AWP in play, but it's, it's going to be tough here for Furia. Yeah, the numbers are too great. They don't have anybody short B. They're lacking in information, Furia. At this point, it would probably make sense to commit to one bomb site together. And try to do what they can, but Vinny, I believe, is still on the B bomb side. Minute 14, and both these teams are capable of very late rotations on the T side, but in a 3v4, where you haven't been getting those multi frags that you need, maybe they're just uh, stretching their gamble out a little further. Smoke's landing near Arts now as he looks for a player, but no one's showing at the moment. He has a smoke himself far, but he doesn't know how, how close people are. There's a chance where he could drop a smoke right in this position, which would allow him to try and defend from long, but they have no information. They can't see anyone. They have no idea what's going on. Yeah, this has actually turned out that despite the man disadvantage, Furia might be in a good spot here. If Art's able to connect his shots, time is really of the essence here. As Gambit starts to move forward, Art looking to get ahead of the play. Can he find something here? Here's the first flick. He does do some damage, but can he survive here around Dice? He's really stuck out there. He needs assistance, and he won't get any assistance in time. Drop is locked out of the site, and Gambit, they've managed to avoid the one player that could have changed it all. Art goes down. And Gambit will have the round now, but the bomb goes down on the A site. And drop in, Vinny try to hold on to what they have. But it's a dark look early on here on overpass for Furia. Yeah, it's so difficult for them to, to make the right play, to put people in the right place. Art alone on the A bomb site to look for information. He's got no one to flash him to have a peek towards long, so he chooses to just smoke it off and hope that that helps. Again, if he's got a flash there, maybe he can have a peek. Maybe there's a different way to utilize that smoke again. If he puts it between the dice and the, and the ward near the toilets, then if they have control of long, for example, if there's a rifle there, they can defend bomb plants from there. It makes it awkward for Gambit to push, but they, they're looking, they're looking towards toilets and they don't see anyone. Gambit are just chilling. They've got the sandals out. They've got a towel around their neck. They don't care. They're having a great time in the sun. There's no information even that late for Furia and it just limits anything they can do. Yeah, that's so unfortunate for Keiserato to be caught like that. Again, that's the power of change, changing the pace on, on a team. You, you're playing really slow, you go really fast and suddenly they're just to, totally out of position to deal with what you're, you're bringing to the table. And into this next one, three rifles to go into this round for Fury. There's the connector play. Hobbit is just going to destroy Arts, deflecting the aggression. Hobbit's in championship form. He is. They, He's they, in championship form. He really is. It's so hard for Fury to make their aggressive plays work. Gambit, they're winning the battles and they're always ready for them. So if you're trying to make it, you're at a disadvantage. You, you are forced to overperform as the individual on Fury's end to actually make those plays work. And so in that sense, Gambit, not only are Gambit playing their game, they are preventing Furia from getting anything close to what would look like them, the, the kind of game that, that they would want to play, that would really get them fired up. So this has to be the most painful possible way for Furia to be playing right now, just playing against Gambit. We'll see if there's an opportunity here. Gambit reset. They're drawing these rounds out, James. They really are. I think he may have seen some legs, yep. 
He saw Nafani as well. He didn't... Yeah, he's carrying the bomb, so that's some good information for them. But Inters, look at the angle he's holding. With 35 seconds, he's holding a flank from Long. And that just shows you how dangerous a team, that one scenario as a secondary option, um, option B, shows you how dangerous Gambit are in this tournament. That yeah. is outrageous. The yeah. presence of mind, the spatial awareness and the timing is peak from Gambit. Yeah, they're so good at setting up stuff like that where they'll have a player that can hear a rotation. And then if, if, if it's the fact that you hear a rotation like that, well, you know that Furia is, they think it's a B play. That's how they're responding, and if the kill happens, boom, you're, you're good to go. And there's still time for Gambit to work other parts of the map as well, if that doesn't work out too. So they really give themselves so many options. Yeah, nothing is for free versus this team. This side of the bracket is absolutely stacked, and that's before anyone mentions the game that's to come. <laughs> yeah. But Gambit are making it so hard on this T side. They always have that option late round. They know what makes sense to do. From a CT side, you've got to find something, a flank, some information, a key kill on a bomb carrier, and they're ready for it. They have the man there. Yeah. Because they have those early five versus fours, they can afford the man there. Definitely. And, and again, as I mentioned, I think this is like one of those matchups that for, for the Furia players, this is such a true test of your mental game. Because you're playing, again, again in a way where you aren't able to play your style, you're getting so few opportunities. And when there are opportunities, they're, they're even or you're at a disadvantage at best. That's kind of how Gambit are playing this right now. They're not giving Furia anything. It's got to be so difficult to be on the receiving end of, but we will get the next round now. And there's more to work with for Furia. So are they able to heal their wounds, James? They've got the AWP onto Serato. Last time he got caught out in the open. Hopefully this time he'll find some more success. How do they get a 5v4? Is the key <laughs> the short B position maybe? Because We've seen Fourier take the AWP for an aggressive peek at the party position, flashed off and unable to even rotate back to the toilet, which is more of a concern when you've gone for a play in connector and you need, your, you need your teammates to help you get back towards divider without getting shot from party and so on. We've seen him in connector in multiple rounds and they've lost the jewels every single time. And it seems it will begin with at least an aggressive Molotov onto T ramp. There's a smoke for the toilets. So this is the first of the anti-AWP utility, if you will. The smoke towards toilets. Sometimes you'll see a flash and or a molly from the fountain to the Vida to take this particular angle away. But it's another missed shot from Serato. He is not on his game with the AWP, it seems. Yeah, that's crazy. That looks on as well. So it must have been that he just was moving or something like that. But either way, Yuri's in the bathroom's on as well. Can he? Work this angle. Yuri and Art in the bathrooms. The deadly duo of the bathrooms have locked it down. Three players go down there for Gambit, and Fury were looking for something. If they can keep five players alive in this round, that would be huge. And at this point, for Gambit, it is a game of damage. And there's that first bit of damage. Shiro takes down Art. And for Furia, they're in a four versus two. They are resetting back to the bomb sites. They know where the, the bomb is. They know that Gambit have to go into bathrooms to take that. However, they don't have any map control, Furia. So with that, Gambit could go anywhere with this bomb. Yeah, unless someone's in a forward position, wherever Gambit chooses to go should be a two versus two, which gives them a chance. There's a flash towards A, but it's 33 seconds on the clock. Oh, and he's, he's stuck. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. He could have chilled there for a while, but that is the go command. The smoke will certainly help. 20 seconds, and they've got to consider what they want to do here, Gambit. They have a full buy in the hole. They've almost got two. So they can at least make it expensive for Furia. Hold on a second. Keiserato, closed casket funeral for him. Shiro, one versus two. Can he try and plant the bomb at least? Not sure if anybody's on the site. Oh, he's down to the 1v1 now. No time to plant. He's got to find the kill. Can he find the last man? No, he can't. But they've done so much damage. And I mentioned this earlier on. Furia have to survive multiple tests with men alive because their money will be short otherwise. And Gambit have got full buys for days. Oh, that is so insane. James, wasn't that a five versus two? And it goes down to a one versus one. That is insane amounts of damage. Okay, there would have been four versus two, of course. Oh, great shot from Shiro. And as you said, maybe that's some of the nerves as well, going for that peak. At that point, you're, you are probably a dead, a dead man, but if you just stay in that position, you waste a lot of time. But either way, Furia, they do pick up the round. They've got the early play from Hobbit into Connector. Got to say quickly, the CT side, for those of you, for the uninitiated, for the new viewers, the CT side will often blow off the door on connector because it makes it harder for the T's to take short B.
because there's more angles for the CTs to shoot them in the back. Even without, even if you've got like a lurker in connector on the other side, like Hobbit, if he's watching the door, these, the CT still have angles from the stairs, so it makes it really harder. But well, it makes it a lot harder for the T's to take that short B position. So that is something that you may see at the start of the round. That's why there's no door there. CT side is not fan of doors. Yeah, and it's it's also easier information for the CTs too. So you can see it gets smoked off. Gambit actually they smoke it off and they reset around the B side. They're looking to go for that monster swing. And we only have Vinny on the side. He's got just a famas. It's not the gun for this. And he's gonna get flashed off as well. Is there any support for Vinny here? He tries to lock this one down. Great first frag from Vinny. He's picked up a second. In comes the reinforcements. Vinny, he's done his job. Yuri's in position on short in time to take down one more. And that leaves Hobbit alone. Oh, in where water. did that come from? And it's just in turns left in the one versus two. Blind throws the molly towards the barrels. So he's shown presence from short. Tried to reset that by making his way towards Monster. Now this is when you really need to land your shot. That is a very timely HE grenade. Pistol will be good enough now. But it is the two AWPs. And one of them is making a lot of noise. 15 seconds to plant this bomb. KS Francis doesn't even have his gun out. Why? There's 15 seconds and he's holding grenades in his hand. Trying to jump peek. Now Inters has a chance to plant this bomb. Oh, it had to land that one but it was way more expensive than it might have been. Either way, Furia make it to four, but again, only one man survives. Yeah, this is so hard. That, that one round where Shiro was able to do so much damage. I mean, that's two rounds in a row now where Furia win with only one player surviving. So their buys are just awful. Gambit are gonna be winning the economic game despite losing the rounds. And the pressure really is on. We'll see. Ooh, that was a nasty one. That answers your question. But yeah, we'll see exactly what are going to be able to do here because they have that utile disadvantage. Quick take towards the fountain position. Nice shot from Yuri. He'll get traded out though. You know, but we talked about it. Those early frags do benefit Furia. Well, they could benefit them if they can get a five versus four. But so many times it's been a five v four for Gambit, and that's caused him so many issues. It's been so hard to turn things around. A four v four, and again, maybe a chance to fall back, but Furia will always look for a second kill if they can find one. So they have dropped a man for Gambit, but they've dropped a man themselves. So maybe the hard part of this round is yet to come. Finney dropping off the short B position now, off the rail. They know. And they're falling back, but again, it's that investigation man. Oh, it's Hobbit and Nathalie. That two-man duo, they've caused so many problems for the Furrier side. Finney caught the grenade now, and he is sandwiched, but he's alive for now. Art's taken uh, Nathalie out. He knows Hobbit's in the water. Dancing in the ammonia, dodging the bullets until that last one. Hold on a second, Axel gets his bell rung and Shiro's down to 10 HP. It's life in Furia yet in this one versus, it's three versus one for them, I should say. Art with a cheeky swing. Again, an early frag for both teams, but Furia convert and they've got three players up. No bomb plant means the money is broken for Gambit. Yeah, that was brilliant. And I, I thought that they, they knew because of the way the rotation was working out, but actually it was the noise from the lurker of Gambit towards the A site that was pulling the rotation out of the B site. So the timing was very fine there. Excellent stuff from Furia. And they're not, they're not done just yet. After that, a very dismal start, they, they've managed to battle on the razor's edge of just being completely destroyed, but they've come out on top, like you say. 5-5, five, five. it's going to be eco territory for Gambit. And Furia should be able to really make some money in this round. We'll have to see. We have some, we have some Tech Nines in play. Oh, we've got Tech Nines. The Rush B is coming, James. That's my guess, at least. Spells danger, even with three Tech Nines. It does. It really does. The Tech Nine is dangerous right now, for sure. And right now, Furia, th th their economy is, is terrible. They need to th win this round as cleanly as possible. They've made the right choice, Gambit, in going to a spot where they can close the distance. And here comes the charge. The stampede of Tech Nines into the B bomb site. Are trying to hold as best he can. He's found two Vinicius for support as well. Shiro and Exile remain down. Goes the bomb by the pillar. I'm pretty sure the Swedes have got a different name for that, but I'll go with Pillar. Exile now in a one versus five. 11 HP, any damage he could do would be a bonus. Bomb plant very unlikely indeed, and Art always up for looking oh. for more, but the shift walk into the angle will not be good for him. And now there's a rifle that can maybe be collected. 
If you've got three players near Monster for Furia. It's so smart of Axel. He knows that the flank is very likely coming. And he sets up the perfect advantageous angle. So he is able to get one bit of damage out of that. Okay, one kill. But that, that's what had to happen for Furia. They had to survive with four or more, really. They need to be growing their economy. And they managed to do it. So there is something in the tank, at least, if in this next round they, they run into problems. So we'll see if that's the case. But Furia, they could, again, they could absolutely turn this one around now. Six to five in their advantage. They've taken the lead. And again, it's, it's hard to find, you know, it's hard to imagine that we find ourselves here, given how it looked earlier on. Oh, it's going aggressive into connector. There's that grenade again. But you can see that smoke is going to try and cause some problems. And you can see the utility for free. They've lost their angles now for that short B position. You can see the spray from B. You can see the urgency in holding that spot, at least with utility. Gambit with a faster round now. The chain flashes are coming through. Vinny's surely been spotted. He's been domed as well. Drop now in an awkward position where he could have two players coming his way. Going to go for a bomb plant here. Maybe trying to fake it. Exile on the site. Flashes from both sides as they try to jostle for position. Down goes Axel, drops still alive with one HP, creating some more space for himself with the smoke grenade, but he's got so many bullets to dodge as well. He's done a great job here. Oh, he turns away just at the wrong moment. Nafani above the smoke on the barrels. Very, very smart angle. And they reset into short, so they make it seem like they're rotating off. Fury is starting to question it, starting to run back. And Gambit, they're going to go back in here. They've got, again, Nafani in that position. Executing back Beautiful. into the site. What can they find here as Yuri gets some tags as they run across? Gambit still needs to plant this bomb and he might just be able to do it now. That was a great angle being held by Art. He made no assumptions. Bomb being faked again. Art can surely hear that. And all the players are here. Two of the three players have kits as well. There are no grenades remaining because Drop could be hit by a grenade and killed. Well, that's one spotted but not swatted. Drop. Down he goes. That's a man advantage for Gambit now, who are posted up around the pillar, around short by the sandbags as well. Art in case rattle on the low ground coming in from CT. A smoke towards short to isolate a fight, but they'll slowly slink away. Yeah, they have to, they have to save. They have to. With the money as it is. I mean, this is this was the whole point of winning their last round with at least four players or more to survive. It it gives them the ability to lose this round, still have a strong buy in the next one. Oh, that was a difficult round, a, a long and labored siege of that B side eventually coming out as a victory for Gambit. Six to six, all tied up again here on this map. This is the second map, of course, in this best of three series. Gambit picking up the first one in overtime on Inferno. I believe we're going to Mirage if we see Firo winning this one. I would love to see a Mirage. And I hope we get there, yeah. So back into the action, full by for both teams. Utility pretty good here for Fury, all things considered. We get well that uh, forward Molotov to deny the CT entry onto sewers, allowing Gambit to take control. Yeah, interesting that Gambit are not interested in, in any variance by taking short B very quickly, but they'll slowly creep in. They have the info too. Art has all the info. He's, he's pushed playground. Yeah. They know they're, they're all around B right now. They can come out of connector though. So Case Rattle will hold that from Divider. And the remainder will wait. And they're going to probably have to wait, Gambit. They like making people wait, like creeping through as well. And they may throw some grenades into the B bomb site just to try and force some utility from Furia. So when they do push, it's a lot weaker. This boost is special because you don't have to jump on your teammate's head. Once you've landed, you can simply stand. It's a quiet boost, a silent boost, if you will. Ooh, Axile. Get Sting staying alive, though. Nafani as well, both. Axile and Nafani critically low at this There's point. There's the five versus four, though. How do they finish the round at this point? Do they try to go into the B site or rotate out? They're, they're looking to rotate out here. They don't have a, a lot of info there, but they are gambling that it is a pretty oh free position. God. That's a sick frag to get. What is there on this site? It's just Keiserato. He's going to whip that orb shot. He needs to find it. There it is. Quick scope comes into play. The second one, not so good though. And there's nothing left on the A site. Gambit once again win the bomb plant. So many missed opportunities with the AWP. Art oh, dashing. 
I don't know if there's a moment's hesitation, if the if the target registration was slow in his mind. He had to get that kill there. Nafni wasn't even facing in his direction. They made all the right plays with Art. Even that kill doesn't go their way. They're just not landing their shots. We see it so many with shots of the AWP. A huge flank uh, back. He had less than 10 HP. He requires one bullet. But still, they're not there. It's, it's got to be nerves, Dan. Yeah, I would imagine it absolutely has to be playing a part in this one. It's been quite a touch and go for some of these situations for Fury. I think overall we're seeing Gambit looking more comfortable in that department, more stable. But we saw it on map one, James. Furia looks out for the count on map one multiple times, but despite that, they still found a way to make the game Bro. go to overtime and then winnable. He yeah, fired shots. I'm pretty sure he fired shots. I think I saw the tracer there. That's rough. That's a rough one. It is a rough one indeed as the smoke is deployed towards Monster. Furia, the fighting pride of Brazil, are in trouble in the dying rounds of this half. The score is still close, though, as much as it's been a struggle for them. But it doesn't look likely to stay that way with two rifles. Shiro in connect with the AWP as Hobbit creeps up the two-man setup. Hobbit's just there. He's got the right eye peak. He's further away from the corner of contention, and he is looking sharp. Yeah, Keiserato picked up the gun, though. I wonder if Hobbit's going to notice that detail and realize that that means that there has to be another player in that vicinity. Keiserato always running back, and... Nafani's just lurked up again, the ever-stable Gambit. Always have plays to make, always have information, and Fury at looking to group up into sewers to take something back on the map. And sure, they'll get position here, but they know that Gambit have cleared out the A side of the map. They have no vision, Fury, on the A side of the map right now. And there's five players left alive here for Gambit, so they're in such great stead. All they can do really at this point is hold on to that rifle, Furia. Try and scavenge for something else. But with five players up for e for Gambit, 470 HP Gambit. Just surgically detecting body detaching body parts from round after round. Detecting, I like detecting, that. Detecting, yeah. It's a new one. Oh dear, Hobbit. How many is he going to get? I think he's definitely getting something here. There he goes through playgrounds and... Looks like Hobbit's gonna go down to Vinny. Shiro is the one instead that takes down, takes out some of these guns. So the trades come through, but that is Gambit are gonna take that every day. Just Vinny who was able to escape here for Furia. Gambit have done their jobs, their economy is still growing. It's not in the best place in the world, but it doesn't really matter too much. They're gonna have more than enough going into the final round. Uh-oh, uh, here they come. Vinny still able to keep that gun in hand. He has to survive. Oh, there we go. Still alive. That's an M4 into this final round of the first half. It is desperate here for Furia. Yeah, some of the Brazilian guys. And you guys need to make some noise for your team. This is a hard half for them. That's it. We need more than that, guys. Come on. you got to be loud, winning or losing. Let them know you're behind them. Last round of the first half. We've got the M4s out for Furia. Iconic for their CT aggression. But they're not shy of T aggression as well, and that is to come. So maybe the worst will be over at this round. Hobbit again on this T side. Devastating. Fury looking for that sewers control, that early play. As you say, Hobbit, he stands tall on the sewers position. Oh, Cobbit gets another one before being traded. Massive damage. Is there anything to be said here for Fury? Did they have a response? Three versus four. The impact frags. It's not even the numbers for Hobbit. It's the impact frags. Ooh. That first game from him and Nafani. Nafani looking to clean <gasps> the bomb. Up. Yeah, he's committed to bomb. And that is a chance. That is opportunity. There's no smokes remaining for Furia, however. And there's a minute on the clock. But at least they know where Gambit are going for once. That's information they don't normally have. Oh my god, is Keiserato is going forward with the flashbang as the smoke dissipates. He picks up the kill. There's the trade though from Shiro. And it's now down, just down to Yuri. And does Shiro have a read as to his position? It's all on Yuri. They line up and Yuri gets both. That's a great result for Fury. Seven to eight at the end of the first half. Gambit, though, that is a solid, solid T side from them. It's dangerous. And again, if they are to go further, 
Those are warning signs for everyone, but it's not over just yet. And again, my question now is, is the worst over in this game for Faria? A very difficult CT side, but can they bring strength to their T side? They were at the mercy of Gambit, I feel like, in many of those rounds. The pace, the control, yeah. they weren't given anything. You saw the attempted flanks and so on. 35 seconds trying to push long, denied. Yeah, Eight I totally agree. Yeah. I think you're right. Like the, I think the word control is, is definitely one of the best words to describe how Gambit play themselves and how also they, you know, they are able to control their opponent. It's, it's pretty incredible. But eight to seven going into the second half now. Is this the last half in this major for Fury? We're about to find out. They're making their way towards the bathrooms. Axile ready for that first jumping player. Doesn't connect the shot, however. And it's a lot of space gained by Fury. Do they keep going, though? Oh, there's a flash, I want to say, from the B bomb site from Nafani to aid him. Nafani on the A bomb site, actually. But he's got another one. Has been deployed. There it is. We've got an exchange at the very least. Four versus four. Has the bomb been spotted? Probably. Oh, Nafani's peaks are nasty. Two kills for him. But he's done all he can do now. A tap from Shiro. And the numbers are kept close. A minute 10, two on three. Hobbit coming through from the back, though. Got some information at the very least. We're waiting for the next move. There's Hobbit. It's going to be hearing that one. Will there be distraction for Hobbit to play off of on this flank? It's huge. Oh, that's an insane shot from Hobbit. What a flick from him. Yuri coming alive, though. He's going to do 180s. Yuri with the 180s. Can he finish it off? No bullets. Can he find a gun? Yuri trying to find a gun. He's still alive. Yuri! He can't make it work, Shiro. Oh, what a play from them. Oh, my God, Shiro. That's an outstanding effort from Yuri. Imagine if he clutches that. Imagine. They'll have to imagine, though, because Shiro, Shiro got that last kill. And Gambit win the pistol. Again, they split the pistols. Both CT sides have won their pistol now. But with a bomb plant, I was going to say, what do Furia do? But before I can even say that, I already know. And you guys will soon find out. Oh, it's picked up the Kree, the armorless Kree. It's effectively going to be a sniper rifle for Art. Oh, we'll have to see how that... Is he not going to drop it to someone, though? With no Kevlar, he's going to have some aim punch to deal with. He's, he's, a, he's an AWPer right now, James. That's, that's what that is. He is. Well, we'll see that Gambit have a pretty passive approach. Again, this, this tends to be their general approach. And Yuri, oh, he's found a peak from Axel around Divider. He's going to take full advantage of that one. Five versus four. It's the in-game leader's dream with a minute and a half to go. But look at the reaction from Gambit. They get information. Oh. They make a play through Monster. Hobbit's going for a deep position. He could destroy the round as Furia come back to this side. I mean, it is just one player. It's drop. Is he go he's going to check for this. He's going to check for this. No. Oh, there it is. Hobbit picks up the kill. They know he's there now, at least. Hobbit is a demon in this series. He's going to be in the nightmares of Furia. A smoke to create some space, to isolate some fights, avoid the flashbang. But can he avoid all these players? He's certainly wasting some time, running out of bullets with the FAMAS, and down he goes. What of the information, though? I think he sees Case Rato carrying the bomb on the kill feed, which is information for Gambit as they try to close what left they have of their net. Now the key is to not misplay this advantage. Here he's got a good position. We can see that Nathan was thinking about flashing for his teammate. As Furia makes steps up, there goes the flash, but that was for Inters, and he's been taken out of the picture. Nafani, though, how much damage can he do with this AK? That's the name of the game right now. As much damage as possible. But is he actually going to pull away with it? That might be the case. They can bring it into the next round here as well, of course. It looks like he feels as though his chances to get any additional kills is slim to none. Yeah, they'll try and do something with this AK in the next round and this force by have worked out for furia art's just been running around naked in this round a krieg and no kevlar i'm not sure if i've ever seen that before from the beginning of a round bought that i'm just gonna go with this krieg and that's it i'm good i am gucci three men will survive for furia indeed they will art's able to get away from the bomb with no kevlar and survive and the gap is close to one things looking dicey for gambit now I don't think they like what's on their plates. Yes, indeed. Looking pretty scary. They can't send it back. 
They gotta take it. Imperia, you know, they are a team that tends to find an affinity on the T side. So we'll see if they're able to keep this momentum going. Gambit is so good at putting a stop to it. This should be the easy round. There's just the one AK in the Famas to worry about. The AK-47 in the hands of Napani. It's on the B site. Gambit have a stack on the B site right now. They are hoping Furia find their way to that site. But Furia running the anti-eco, anti-force by protocols at the moment. We've got the buddy system in connector and on long A as well. And then Vinny's just looking after any monster aggression, which is often a play that teams make to get that info. That is the last smoke for Gambit. Furia with a good spread with over a minute on the clock. The nooks and crannies are mostly covered. The inside of the toilets may be a question for them, an outside divider and such. You can see Shira looking for information. Won't find out where the bomb is though, as we can see it's been left in a passive position. And Furia will offer and execute into this A bomb site. In terms of utility, not in terms of personnel. Maybe a double pump is on the cards though. Bomb has been collected now as they will gravitate towards this A bomb site. They've invited Gambit here. And now they're on the way. Uh, this time with armor and a helmet though. That AK is here and drop is the first to go. Nathan has been traded though. And Gambit have lost position on this rifle. However, from up close, you can see the pre five from Inters. Not gonna work out for him. Three to five from Furia and the score is tied. Oh, I was nervous, James, though, going into the stack. I mean, Gambit had the info. They had plenty of time to rotate, but Furia confident going in, and that's really, really great to see. I have to say, Gambit is, when you compare how Gambit plays those rounds to Furia, it's, like, actually insane how drilled Gambit are to just maximize every edge and play the position, play the Efficient. rotation, play the information game, mislead your opponent. Gambit do all of that so well. Furia... They love the, a bit of brute force, a bit of pace. And we're going to see that from Furia again. Towards this B site, up against just the USPs. Can they get in cleanly? So far, so good. As they swing from Monster, Drop's going to open it up as well off. It's a bold play from Art with the creek. <laughs> the slower fire rate from it is um, it's hard to deal with. It's hard to adjust to, but he certainly has. And depending on your peaks, you can have so much utility with that scope. 100% armor penetration, it shreds. It's just a little slower. Now, it's time for Gambit to come through on the buy. They've lost the lead, but maybe this is where the CT half begins for Gambit as they'll be through to their first buy. We can see the AWP for Shiro. But they've got a timeout to discuss the way forward. Furia. They're in such a good position now, they've really fought hard for this one. The CT side, it was difficult. It was troublesome. But on the T side, it feels as though, again, they have more of an affinity with this side of overpass. And in general, I would say. Furious T sides have always been impressive. Shout out to the Gambit support in the crowd. Some in the back, some in the front, and of course the Furia crowd are here as well. I think I heard some boots, which is always good. <laughs> well then, this is a key test for Furia. Again, they have to be a heavy underdog in this series, regardless of the map. The first buy, the first four buy for Gambit on their CT side. Axel has a little peek, wants to see what's going on, doesn't fancy that fight, and he'll fall back. I like the discipline. He, he wants to engage on his terms if he can. And what does that, what does that send as a message to Furia? Yeah, so Gambit, I think, with that bit, you know, a bit of information, they, they're thinking, okay, Connector take, that's under control by Furia, and that gives them sort of information as to the pacing as well as the emphasis on which parts of the map Furia are working from on this part of the default. And they're looking to gear up, I think, Gambit. They're probably thinking about an info play towards Monster. That is a possibility. As we see Axel, he's going to spot one around Divider. Shiro is there with the AWP. They've got to be careful. That's a flick and a miss. Ooh. That looked like a haircut, though. Yeah, Gambit repeatedly disengaging which is a huge question mark for Furia. What, is their, what are they up to? What is their play? Exile now creeping up long. Something Furia will have to be careful about. Art has the scope, but Axel has the headshot. Ooh, this, is, this is quite dangerous now. There's 30 seconds left in the round. Furia with that losing that frag. 
they can't afford to go into the A site. There's no way to have a setup. They have to brute force this into the B site where there is three players. Gambit are ready. They're so ready for this. They know it's coming. They're set up. They have time on their side as well. Here comes Furia, and they're against everything. And it is just a spray down right now in favor of Gambit. They're looking good to hold on to this one. Yuri, can he get any additional frags? They have been shut down by Gambit. Gambit knew exactly what was going to happen after that kill. Nafni rotating to the balcony immediately, which we could see on the radar. Hobbit moving closer to Monster with his teammate in case there was a, a push at bad timing. They could just punish the smoke pushes, avoid the flashbangs as well for the most part. They were ready for that. They knew what Furia were going to do before Furia knew what they were going to do, and they were conditioned. They, they were sent there by Gambit. Now, the score is 10 to 10, so there's time for Furia to adapt and adjust, but they have to read what is happening and find a way to overcome it. 10 to 10. Full buy for both sides. No money left for both sides. This is an important round. This is a very important round for both of these teams to take control of this map. Ars picked up the AWP, James. We've mostly been seeing it on Kesarata, obviously on the CT side. Let's see what Ars Ar can do any better. There's a smoke. Oh, we're going to be so careful with this one. Shear on the other end of it. He's actually tagged someone, I think, or maybe not. They look close. Axel, is he gonna, he's going to get flashed in. Is the timing going to work out for Axel? There goes the peak. Completely blind. Keserato. Axel converts two off of that flash. Cannot trade this somehow. He's got to get something. Axel gets a third. That's absolutely criminal. Wow, that's a devastating round from Gambit. Maybe a false sense of security again. Constantly disengaging in the previous round. Just trying to avoid fights until they go deep and then suddenly take the aggression that they surely weren't expecting. How Axel gets away from that with three kills is beyond me. Yeah. You know, the, the first half you could say, okay, Furia losing the jewels, maybe it's the AK versus the M4. What's the excuse now? They've got the AKs out, they've got the rifles out on the T side, they've got the numbers and they're getting deleted by yeah. one man. Yeah, I mean, sometimes, I mean, that's just such a good example of the fundamentals. It's just a pop flash. It's just a single pop flash play at a timing that just catches Gam uh, Furia off guard, and of course, obviously the skill in Axile, he's going to maximize that advantage and gets three out of it. Insane. Yuri, holding onto this AK for now. Would be happy to get some damage in. That is a very weak Axile jumping around there for info. Nathan, he's heard him. Yes. It goes, it gets worse. It just gets worse. Or does it? a sharp shot from Yuri, but with 11 seconds, it's a small highlight in a very depressing round for Furia. But again, it's information. There's time to adjust as Gambit moved to 11. Gambit will mix up the pace. They will show aggression when you don't expect it. But the prop also the problem is, how do you overcome that for Furia? Does that slow your round down completely where you're waiting for pop flashes? Do you live in fear? Because Gambit are trying to instill fear into Furia's T side. This is an overperformance. This second kill as well. So sharp, drilling the whole upper body with the with the M4 there. And the third kill to boot. Shut down the round at the party position. Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you have to give some credit as well, like at the end there, like a couple kills coming out does prevent Gambit's economy from growing too much. And we're going to get Fury going fast towards sewers. There's the quick smoke there. They've only got some pistols to work with. Yuri opening it up. Can he get the entry with the AWP? He's certainly looking for it. Oh, but Zero is ready. Knows his angles. And he's not missing that one. Can they get the AWP? I think that it's us looking for it, seeing if it got blown towards him. Have a look at Exile. Have a look at all that information. He doesn't have connector information at present. The other alternative would be around party holding off angles, but he still has a very strong spot. A minute 10. We spoke about the 5v4s for Gambit when they were on the T side. They're finding them on the CT side as well, of course. This is pistols, but let's not forget the overperformance in the round prior, yep. where it was a 5v2 at the beginning for Gambit. All Something right. to think about later on. And again, they're ready. Hobbit and Inters now punishing the smoke push from either side. Stereo frags for Gambit on the B bomb site, leaving Art with not much to do. His job here is to die. He needs round loss bonus. That's all he can really offer us at this point. Yeah, and I think it's 
The difficulty here for Furia especially, I think this is this round and I mean the previous one are a good highlight for that, is that Gambit are playing strat like strategically and tactically better as a team. So what Fury have to do to be able to defeat that is they have to have their individuals. The individual level, the clutch, has to be stronger for Fury. That's that's how they win against a team that is outperforming them in, in the strategy department and the tactical department. Which so far, I think that's been the story here, is that Fury, they have to call on great individual moments to pull out the clutch in the moments that matter the most. And they have to find that here. Because Gambit, 12 rounds against a ton of Fury. As we go into this next one, Fury, they've Got a decent buy, four AKs, one Galil, but it's not as good as they would want. Yeah, and, and it's, you know, it doesn't have to be pretty. It does not have to be pretty. They reset Gambit after Gambit won the pistol, which has put Furia in a reasonable position. They're offering some grenades towards this B-bomb site, and of course, Art's creeping through multiple smokes, eating CT flashbangs as well. Hobbit has to be afraid of this. God, can he get more than one though? He's made it scary for a time, but very quickly, Gambit respond with one more, as per usual in this series. Four on three for Gambit, and they still have control. Yeah, that was honestly so close for Fury to get that extra kill. That looks so close. Can Vinny be the one to do it? As he walks through, oh, that's just great from Vinny. Finds the headshot, they know one's behind barrels. Inters has seven HP. His job is just to keep hold of this position for as long as he can, but they don't, Fury don't have the bomb. They don't have the bomb right now. This could be a problem. Inter's looking to maybe make a play. Oh, he's found one. He's found a play and a half there. Takes down one more. And it's up to Yuri and Keiserato. There's the run for the bomb and 40 seconds to get it planted. Yeah, and Shiro's in shotgun mode. That has to feel very awkward for him. And essentially, sound has been cut here. It's uncomfortable. They didn't know what's going on. They may hear some running soon. Exile is moving more and more into position which is going to limit where the bomb can be planted. They're going to commit to the bomb plant. No, there's a swing from Exile. Again, it's Exile now to get these final kills. First it was Hobbit, now it's Exile to really brutalize Furia at all the worst moments for the Brazilian side. Yeah, what a great performance we've seen from Exile. Previously as well, at the beginning of the round, you know, you mentioned the instilling the fear with the pop flash plays around Fountain. He was, do he was doing that again in this round. At the beginning, he was just teasing, he was peeking, he was getting information. If Fury had a lurk towards that side of the map, Axel's keeping Fury's lurk in check. He's doing so much right now for Gambit. Looking for the four-man boost. Not happening, though. It is a faster round from Furia straight into the B-bomb site. Flashbangs all over the shop. Hobbit just chilling on short. The site's cut in half by M4s of Gambit. Time and chances are running low for Furia. Gambit, four rounds ahead and two rounds away from semi-finals. They're looking so strong right now, Gambit. What a team. Such a strong performance from them so far. Just so, again, I use like stable control. Like these kinds of words are what I think about when I'm looking at how Gambit play this game. And they had, I mean, that first map, that got out of control. But again, they managed to kind of keep their nerve against Furia. Furia, they're in a similar position like they were in the first map, James. We get the tactical timeout coming in from them. This has, to, whatever, whatever it is, the result of this tactical timeout, it needs to work. This has to be the moment. It's a good buy from Furia. They're not going to get another chance this good unless they start winning rounds. Spoke about the Brazilian support. Also support from Hobbit all the way from Kazakhstan. There's quite a few Kazakhstani flags as we can see there. Everybody's got support here at the major. As it always is, as it should be, bringing the community together. But soon it may be torn apart because this may be the last full buy we see from Furia unless they can find a way in. Five rounds in a row for Gambit looking to storm to a semi-final position. Oh, man. One shot, one kill. His name is Shiro. It just looks so clean from Shiro. What a player. Hobbit executes Yuri in connector. Excellent kill to find in Furia. Find themselves with three players left. They're nowhere near the bomb right now. It has to be some individual prowess now. That's all that they have left. Drop out there by himself. Can he find something?
This setup is so strong, though. I don't know how you deal with this, especially by yourself. Surely a jiggle. You try to throw off the shot, but you cannot throw off Shiro. Art is next up on the plate. What is he able to deliver in this position? Again, a superior angle by Gambit. Gambit player, this has just been the story this entire time. Yeah, it looks like these teams are on different levels on overpass. Furia having to fall back now. Gambit not giving an inch, not giving anything. No space to breathe for Furia. And their oxygen is running very low indeed as Gambit moved to match point to put themselves in the semi-finals of the first major in two years. And they will be playing either Na'Vi or Vitality. So <laughs> yeah. it's got to be the hardest way possible. You're yeah, with the big boys now. Oh, this is dangerous. Of course, Napoli picks up the kill. Oh, no. After time, James. Oh, two players dying after time, right as Gambit hit match and series point here in the quarterfinals of this major. Unreal. No quarter given by Gambit. None. None whatsoever. Not in your part of the map. Not in our part of the map. Oh, but yours is theirs God. as well, as far as overpass is concerned. Abs just the jewels are just simply not being won. Gambit are uh, driving an 18-wheeler over Furia at this point. And it is ugly as hell, especially with the way that round ended. We've got two Glocks yeah. against match point Gambit. Rather you than me. It's, it's, yeah, at the start of the round, it's basically like a three versus five. Gambit are just ice cold, and speaking of which, Axile is ready to deal with the swell of Furia players as they make their way down long. He's trying to back away, and he might just get something out of this. No, does get taken down, and that's a gun on the ground. Shiro thins out the numbers as they charge towards him. Is this the moment for Shiro? He's going to get flashed here. There is opportunity for Fury with this pace, but it looks like Shiro and Napani are holding the line. There's so little left here for Fury. Two players, that's all they have. They have to keep going. There's no choice. They can't go back. Inters, Napani, Hobbit all surrounding them at this point. I mean, Hobbit's not just there just yet, but soon will be. Drop. That's another Frank James. And there was one. It is Vinny versus two he's got 40 seconds and he can't make a mistake now he doesn't have the information hobbit in connector is going to make things even worse he doesn't know if he has a one versus one inter is moving into a passive position gambit are going to play it safe they're going to retake together they don't need to give the one v one vinny's looking for so he should get a bomb plant at the very least at the very least but hobbit is creeping and that's going to be that 